you, you, you brought up a use case of blockchains in private uh, industry. What are some use cases where you would need a, because we talked about how you need a blockchain when you don't when you don't want to trust people. Yeah. What's an industry that can benefit from a blockchain, like being used natively? Oh, that's that's very simple. Like for example, right? We have a lot. If you look at all the colleges, the governments, and everything, they record their data that's publicly. So for example, like when my son was born in Dallas County, uh, which is um, uh, where the city of Dallas is at, in located in the state of Texas. Uh, for anyone that's listening outside the U.S., um, in that city. It's, uh, we had to pay $25 to the county clerk's office to, to get... To register the birth certificate? No, to get a copy of the birth certificate. <coughs> to get a copy of it. Right? And if you use, if they use a public blockchain and the Baylor Hospital network where my son was born, if, when he was born, if they did, if they created a birth certificate for him and hashed that birth certificate and compressed it and hashed it, and sent one Satoshi from the Baylor Hospital Network into the Dallas County's private blockchain, then that will verify that my son was born on that date and time and everything. Proof of existence. Yeah. yeah. And then in the future, you know, for the rest of his life, whenever he needs a copy of a birth certificate or anything like that, he can just go to the blockchain and point to everyone that there's the hash. But wouldn't that be a public blockchain, not a private blockchain? Well, it's a private blockchain because the uh, the blockchain is run by the Dallas County. So so wait, wait it's because it gets it gets into what's the difference it's, it's between that? It's publicly viewable, but it's viewable. privately permission yeah. for. Uh, so why history. do you need a blockchain for that if the county trusts itself? Uh, be, be, because it's it reduces cost. Okay. So because imagine anyone can come there and view for free, right? But I can go over there and I have to. So why not just make a view for like a data a normal database? You can't, but they're not doing it. Okay. Yeah. So if they're going to do it, they might as well do it on a technology that uh, uh, is more lower cost. Yeah. And another, another use case for that is uh, land titles. Um, this is something that Factum is going after because there's a lot of... Let's talk about Factum. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot let's of... Let's make a disclosure about Factum. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so, well, well, there well, goes another disclosure. disclosure. Yeah, let's, let's hear right? what's the next right, disclosure. Yeah, yeah, I just want your audience to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You we, know, we're, we're, are, you, are you the investor in fact? I am an investor. Well, we're, we're active in, uh, yeah. investors in fact. Yeah. So, so there, you, you can, okay, so let's dig into all, all, all not all, investing. <laughs> so basically, you can assume if we uh, know a lot about something. Yeah, just assume, just assume that we're talking assume about that it. We're probably investors. We're probably, because we are investors. So we are first and foremost investors. So if we're talking about something, just assume that. We have a, we're talking our book, okay? That's just a, a full, so because that's what we do. Uh, that's what we, uh, we're doing. So uh, one, one of the use cases of, of a blockchain, um, you said, is that a lot of times um, it can be used when you, the government, say a government doesn't even trust itself. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, and land titles in, in many, even, forget about it, not even third world country. Even Does in, that mean they're even, mining? Or are you talking about POS system? No, Sorry. no, no, no. I'm not. I'm talking about, for example, even in America, when you go buy a house, you have to buy something called title insurance, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's something that's a major cost of the house. Now, if you think about why do you have to buy title insurance, because it's possible that you're buying a title that isn't clean, right? Like that. Even even though the government keeps records of supposedly they keep records of all the titles that's in their jurisdiction. They're not entirely sure if there's somebody has a claim on that title, right? Uh, or a lien, or oh, a lien, or something. Yeah, or, or exactly. Uh, they they took out another. Yeah, mortgage they got out another and mortgage, and nobody, and nobody else updated yeah. the title, right? So so there's this thing called title insurance. So it's not even in third world countries. It's even in our country, right? Where you you have this extra cost because there's no no one is actually actually sure about what is the status of a title or. If you think of a title, like I said, uh, we say the blockchain is like a ledger, right? So no one is even really entirely sure about okay. what is the state of the ledger. I, I think I see where so, we're so if you that. talk about, okay, now think about Back. where where corrupt governments, right? If a government that's more corrupt than ours, right? Where, you know, based on the next election, where you would now have this... You're saying that there's a more corrupt government than the U.S.? <laughs> um, Are you willing to go on record saying that? <laughs> I think I, I mean, could let, say... Let, let's just use my family uh, yeah, as, yeah. As, as an uh, example, well, right? Uh -huh. So for, you asked earlier, uh, uh, well, that, you know, why would, you know, someone need a, a private blockchain yeah. for it? They trust each other already, right? Or if, let's say the Dallas County, uh, anybody can view it, right? 
But here's the problem, like, I'll use myself as an example, like, my family, we originally, I, uh, I was born in Vietnam, I didn't leave Vietnam until I was, you know, seven or eight years old, and when I left, uh, after the communists took over uh, Vietnam, uh, in the southern part of Vietnam, I grew up in a very small village. Uh, there was only, uh, I asked my uncle one time how long it takes to drive through the village, and he looked at me confused. He goes, man, you can stay on one side of the village and just yell at someone at the other side and talk to them. You know, and he goes, you don't yeah. need to drive. Yeah. And, and what happened was when the communists took over, they took over three of my grandfather's uh, houses. Okay? They, they just seized it and confiscated it when they came in and, and took over the, the whole south, right? And 20 years later, the only reason why we were able to get the property back when they decided to give it back to its citizens, to its rightful owners, um, the only reason why was because we lived in a village that was so small that everybody knew each other, and they agreed that, yeah, that, that plot of land or that property belonged to my grandfather. Village blockchain. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. we had a, yeah, an in-house <laughs> village blockchain, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You know, and what happened was they agreed that that property belonged to my uh, grandfather, which <clears throat> he's no longer there, so it went to my grandmother, which <clears throat> she was still alive at that time, and then when she passed away, she passed the, the properties on to my uh, little brother, who was still in Vietnam. But just think about this for a moment. What happens if the village blockchain wasn't there? Imagine instead of having a few hundred people live in that village where they can come to an agreement on who owns what. Imagine if that was the capital at that, excuse me, the capital at that time, which was uh, Saigon or Ho Chi Minh City, where it's bigger than the city of Atlanta that we're in right now. How would you come to a consensus that that property was owned by my family. Uh, may, may I ask a question? Uh, since we're talking about Factum, uh, why can't we just use uh, Bitcoin for this? I'm just curious. Uh, in, in, in regards to uh, so, what Factum's doing? The or title, title, sure. the title use case? Yeah. Okay. Like, so, uh, yeah. So fact, Factum uh, uh, is basically Bitcoin, as we know, Bitcoin transactions are very expensive and getting more expensive uh, by the month, it seems, right? Mm -hmm. And so what Factum allows us to do is, is basically they're layering their own blockchain on top of Bitcoins, right? And so that you Oh, it's actually using Bitcoin. It's anchoring on mm -hmm. the Bitcoin. So it's anchoring back. So, so it's, it's like anchoring back. To, okay, so they, they do okay. have the federated server where they're kind of centralized, uh, where uh, it, it's only right now just Factum servers uh, updating the Factum blockchain. But they to prove that they, they didn't just go change their database, right? They actually take a bunch of their blocks, hash it in, and then stick it into, anchor it into the Bitcoin makes blockchain sense. so they can prove, no, we didn't okay, just change our blockchain because you see you can reference it back to Bitcoin, uh, right? Yeah, the other thing too on uh -huh, top of yeah. that, right, uh -huh. is so, that the, the way that the Factum uh, uh, technology works, <laughs> it's not dependent on just Bitcoin. So if you want to use their technology, you can anchor it into any, 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 yeah, any yeah, blockchain. Yeah, they, like if something that. else becomes yeah. more secure, yeah, they can anchor it to exactly. Ethereum. They can anchor it to yeah. anything. So, exactly. So they've greatly reduced. Now you're asking why can't you do that? Well, if you needed to anchor millions of hashes into the Bitcoin blockchain, that's not going to happen on Bitcoin. So uh, uh, Tyrion does that. Who? Tyrion. T okay, so, so I don't you, know. If you want, I can tell you what they do, and then sure. you can tell me how that di uh, differs. Sure. Mm -hmm. So. So you know the idea of making an Merkle root and then combining sure. a bunch of SHA-256 hashes up into a parent. Mm -hmm. You have one uh, you know, root that represents all the sure. underlining data, and then you just put that into uh, the Bitcoin blockchain. And then you have another system. So instead of like a federated, uh, so I, 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 see, I don't really know who holds the data with Factum. Maybe you can educate me on that. But as far as like the actual raw data, maybe that's still the customer that, that then just well, has to hold on to the data and then prove that it's been hashed at a certain time. Well, I, I don't know too much about what it what so, so, is. So Tyrion is, a, is, a, is, a, is, I would call it a central service uh -huh. that, that you have to trust for like 10 minutes until it writes to the next block. But and how, then how does it, okay, so how does it? It's like it, an API call. Okay, so it, it basically, no you do have to trust it for a certain amount of time. Yeah, so you have to trust it until it gets to the well, next Then block. how do you look up your own hash? Like, let's say I have these hundred hashes uh, that mm -hmm. I need to store. I do understand that it can hash all of that and put one hash into the So Bitcoin. how do you keep track of it with that? Well, because, because they, they run, they layer a Bitcoin, uh, the Factum blockchain on top of Bitcoin, right? Yeah. And right now, okay, so but how right do you know, now, like, what's your address right, in the Factum blockchain? 
Well, because you know which block it was in. That's well, well, who keeps track of that? Okay, right? so the, the Bitcoin, ser the Factum server does that. And right now, it's a central server, but this next release, the, the Milestone 2 that they're, they've been working on is to go to a federated server model. Okay. Where it's that database is now going to be distributed among, and then you still have servers. to hold your own data, but they'll hold on to the hash yeah, information. Yeah, hold on to the hash information. So, yes. so with Ethereum, so you can you can actually yeah. uh, there's even an app where you can okay. uh, you can upload these hashes into the Factum uh, uh, blockchain. So so that that's how, that's where it's being stored. It's sto being stored as as a layer, an application layer on top of Bitcoin. So Ethereum's literally, uh -huh. it, it's doing something similar, but it's just bypassing the blockchain and just making an API call to Ethereum. Uh -huh. And then Ethereum will just do that for you and then just send okay. you back the, the your, your receipt that you can then prove belongs in that Merkle root. So it's doing like the same thing. And then you can just so hold that your own. Oh, you hold that on your own. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, so yeah. they're actually storing it on on uh, their own servers here, uh, which is going they'll, to be... They'll better. share that information with you. Yeah, yeah, they'll share that information. They'll serve that information to you. You don't have yep. to hold on to it. So... Uh, and like I said, uh, they're, they're not. Well, fully... you should hold on to your your proofs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, you could also publish these. That they also that means mm -hmm. you could also, with fact, and publish these these proofs. Like they've they've done this with uh, some books. Uh, and I guess I'm just wondering, yeah. is it really uh, to to have that? I, to me, it seems like a lot of overhead to have a whole fact on blockchain to uh, be able to peg stuff against a, a, a like a real secure blockchain. Because mm -hmm. obviously, it seems like. Factum's whole uh, use case is pegging stuff against other blockchains, and then they're like a they're like a helper service that that gets you there, and then use like factoids or something. Yes, yeah, so you use factoids to make so, entries into this. So, is it really worth all that overhead if you can just make an API call to a service that will just do it for you? Well, ultimately, 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 I think their vision is to become a fully decentralized blockchain. Right now, it's not there yet. Right, mm -hmm. but I, and they're taking one step there with this federated server model, right? Where it's not just them; it's going to be. He's been dying to ask a question. All right, yeah. go, ahead. go ahead. No, I was just oh, yeah. So, oh, so okay. Oh, my bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> I want to add this so that because that way your listeners will know, right? Uh, I mean, yeah. you're asking a valid question. You know, why why use the Factum service or technology when you just write it yourself directly there or? Use tearing like you said, right? Yeah. But here's where the thing. Well, data. Here's, here's yeah. the thing. For an individual, that's doable. For an individual, if you want to go do that, or if you're a small business, but if you look at a place like, let's say, they have contracts with the Homeland Security, <laughs> Homeland Security is not going to go and do that. They're going to rather they would rather outsource that to someone else that knows how to do that to do it for them. Well, uh, so so like for for I mean, because you. Can't because you know, just do direct into the blockchain, but Ethereum provides like a sure. similar type of service. Sure. You can do it on prem with stuff. its own blockchain. Yeah. I, I, and I like I don't know much about we, we, the, yeah, it, it was yeah, just interesting. We can I, talk about I, I, I can tell you a lot about Factum, but I, I can't really say sure. as to so, what one versus the other. So well, okay, let's let's just move on. Um, so yeah. so what are what are the other big use cases that you see stuff that you? So we talked about proof of existence. That's okay, obviously. Okay, so, so I, as far as okay, I can so. tell you uh, about Factum is they are going to focus on uh, mortgages this year. I think that's going to be a a major. Uh, I used to work in the mortgage industry. Sure. And so good luck. I mean, so, <laughs> so I okay. I didn't say they will succeed. I'm saying that this is one one area of focus for them. Uh, and uh, they they explained that right now uh, mortgage backed securities uh, are it, it like one of the reasons we had the whole housing uh, mortgage collateral as color. Yeah, yeah, but but mortgage backed securities is because there's an entire paperwork that goes with a mortgage backed securities. And, and these securities, it's very difficult to trade them because every time they're traded, the buyer doesn't know, did this person have the right credit Honest. score? Did, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 all of the supporting documents, right? Well, if you factomize it, imagine if you could just know that, okay, all of this work that was done before and the integrity of that work, right, can move with that security. And you have this hash, if you hash all of that, and then, of course, you can't store all those documents on the blockchain, but you can store the hashes of them. And then you can make, you can, you can make sure that, 
I have a question about facts before we leave this. Okay. Uh, uh, but that, that's, a, that's a, a, a big use case that if it, I, I, I don't know. know. Live Masters is big ones. Because, sure. Like, you know, she, as we know, invented mm -hmm. that whole instrument. That sure. Whole class of instruments. Sure. The, those complex mm -hmm. derivatives. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think, I think a blockchain is probably an ideal use case for that. I don't mm -hmm. know exactly how, it can, how it's going to be implemented, but I know it sure, sure will one day. Yes. Uh, yeah. yes. So Factum uses POW or POS? Well, it's a federated server. I so it doesn't know. use I okay. Think, yeah, so it's yeah, not it's, using so so Factum itself isn't a blockchain. Then? Well, it, it well, yeah, I'm confused. Your, depending yeah. on your definition, you know, I, I think they're no moving. depending on your definition. It's like <laughs> depending on everyone. So, 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 so earlier we said uh, blockchain's immutable, and we're using some kind of algorithm. You said proof of work. Yeah. So it's immutable. What makes it immutable is their it's making noise. Oh. Oh, is that uh, they're anchoring? It's this whole idea of they're 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 proving that they have a hash and it's being anchored to, to Bitcoin, right? So that you can always reference their blocks as yes, we have this anchor that our, our blocks hashed into this hash that's that's being anchored into these. Right, it's a, it's yeah. anchored, but it itself isn't a blockchain. It's anchored to a blockchain, but it itself isn't a blockchain, right? Well, it's, it's almost like a, a factoid asset, like proof of federation. Proof of Federation? Proof of know. Federation, yeah. Sense. Yeah. Peel up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so any, anyway, that, that, that's, the, uh, that's the whole idea. I think it is they're trying to reduce the cost of making entries into the Bitcoin blockchain. If you ask me, like, what is Factum trying to accomplish? It's really, I think it's a, it's a order of magnitude cost reduction to insert data into, or to, at least to anchor data into the Bitcoin blockchain. Yeah, I would put it like a same thing as like a Tyrion or a TDB. Yeah. It's it's some it's it's, it's a an variation outside that, service yes. that just anchors itself to the blockchain, okay. mm -hmm. and that's probably going to mutate over time. Sure, too, because they're, they're like you said, they're going to try to move away from federation. You said, yeah, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna they've moved they're moving to a federated server instead of just a central server. So that's, oh, so, that's so it's centralized now, and it's moving. Well, to I a think they are. I, 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 I don't remember. I know the milestone two that's out is moving to a federation of servers. Do you think they'll ever ever make it truly decentralized? I think they will. I, I know they're trying. I know they're 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 moving in that direction. Uh, at, the, at, the, at, the, yeah. at which point will it be a blockchain? <laughs> we're getting very philosophical. Remember, we're <laughs> invest okay, remember we're you're investors. Okay, remember we're investors. Remember we're investors. We're investors. Let's talk about the investors. questions. Yeah. 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 Here's, here's sure, the thing that you guys got to remember yeah. about this, right? Yeah. The, the, the question that when we look at a uh, cryptocurrency project, we don't look at it as whether or not, you know, one, if Factum is better than Tyrion or vice versa. What we look at is what's the profit potential? Can we make money? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Can because, we make money? Can, you know, is it undervalued? Is it overvalued? Yeah, nothing exactly. changes. You know, you, you ain't going to make a change in this world until you have the money to do it. Let's talk about investments. Yeah. yeah, Let, let's, yeah. let's go ahead. What, what are you willing to share as far as your strategy? Okay. You so know, like, how do you... What, hey, why don't you so share with them what we... The, the biggest miss we had last year was in 2016 so that they will know... Uh, yeah, yeah. So we... Year. We... Uh, like, uh, we have two different styles. I'm more of a fundamental analysis kind of guy mm -hmm. and Ty is more of a, a technical... <laughs> yeah. So he's looking at the charts and the squiggly lines <coughs> and... And supply and resistance, and and doing uh, all the charts, looking for, I, I would say a, a tactical entry and exit points mm -hmm. is is uh, based on the market action, and I think that that's where Ty focuses more on. I'm more of a valuation guy. I look at these projects, and I try to put a number on a, a value on would, it. Would you say you're more long term and he's more no, short term? No, 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 absolutely not. Absolutely no. not. I, I, I am also short term too, right? Okay. Like, uh, I'll give you a, a example of a short term call. When ETC Classic first magically appeared on Poloniex, yeah. right? At first I thought it was a scam, right? I thought um, it was a scam Yeah, too. I, I, at first I thought it was a scam, but then I kept watching it because there was so much volume. And I made a, uh, a valuation call. I said that, okay, it's trading at 50 cents now. That gives it this valuation. Uh, but if any exchange picks it up, it's going to double or triple. So at what point it is it not a scam? That's, that's actually interesting. Well, uh, okay, okay, so now, that, that, this is something that, that, But, but sorry, that's a short-term valuation. Like, that's an example of a valuation call. It was like, all right, this is what the market is valuing it at right now. But... In, in the near term, these are the things that might happen that could change that fundamental analysis, uh, that fundamental value. 
such as simply if Bittrex and a bunch of these other exchange, yeah. if Shapeshift picks it up, it if, if it's an exchange, now all of a sudden there's more liquidity. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's you know you could instantly get a double or triple, right, in a very short period of time. So that's not that that's a, that's using fundamental analysis in a short term short time period. So he 